What is up, good people? Jungle Link here. Hope you're doing well. Pretty flat day for crypto. Bitcoin down about a percent, 50,800. Ethereum down about 1.7 percent, 2,925 dollars. XRP, well, you know what XRP is doing, 53 and a half cents. Big winners on the day. Uniswap romping to a massive 53% gain on the 24 hour. And AGIX, if you like those uh, AI plays, up about 12% on the day. I think you have to have some exposure to AI cryptos. If you want to know more about the sector, Nick Black, one of the finest minds in crypto, check out his daily live streams. And also ensure to watch Jerry Hall, follow him on Twitter there. Uh, just a great mind, a brilliant mind within crypto. Also someone that has a lot of insight to artificial intelligence and its integration into cryptocurrency. So today we had the release of some new Satoshi emails we haven't seen before. Article titled, new, Newly Released Satoshi Emails Reveal a Treasure Trove of Early Bitcoin Lore. Satoshi didn't come up with the term crypto and he wanted to downplay Bitcoin's ability to make anonymous payments. A litany of insights into the early days of crypto were recently revealed when Satoshi's earliest collaborator released 120 pages of email correspondence between the two on GitHub on February 23rd. The true identity of Nakamoto remains a point of conjecture throughout the greater cryptocurrency and blockchain community. And I've given you my opinion I believe he's one of the members of the Skeen team. But the truth is, doesn't really matter who he is. There's no smoking guns or telltale revelations that would immediately shine a light on Satoshi's true identity in these emails, but they do include many fantastic quotes and a general air of Satoshiness that the same straightforward, simple yet comprehensive, no nonsense style that permeates the Bitcoin white paper. Quotes from Satoshi Someone came up with the word cryptocurrency. Maybe it's a word we should use when describing Bitcoin. What do you think? And of course, they ended up going with that name. The second quote here, I think we should de-emphasize the anonymous angle. With popularity of Bitcoin addresses, instead of using IP, we can't give the impression it's automatically anonymous. It's possible to be semi-anonymous, but the backlash would be much worse if we hadn't prepared the explanation by warning in advance that you need to take a lot of precautions. So, you know, most of the time they can kind of, if they want to track down who's sending these payments based on, you know, all the various flows of value. We know that within blockchain. Now, also in these early emails, there's the energy debate, the waste of energy using proof of work. Satoshi anticipated Bitcoin's energy debate, an email thread with early collaborators. Satoshi Nakamoto warned that Bitcoin could become a significant consumer of energy in 09 emails. Proof of work is central to Bitcoin security, but debated for its energy consumption. Proof of work is the only solution I found to make peer-to-peer e-cash -peer e work without a trusted third party. Of course, since then, we have other options available, whether it's consensus, proof of stake. There's quite a few models out there today. Satoshi went on to say, if it did grow to consume significant energy, I think it would be less wasteful than we see with traditional finance. The banking activities that Bitcoin would replace. The cost is an order of magnitude less than the billions in banking fees that are paid, brick and mortar buildings, skyscrapers, junk mail, credit card offers. Satoshi went on to point out the irony of the situation of having to choose between economic liberty and conservation. Now, to me, when I look at proof of work, I think things will kind of balance out between the value of the network and what it's providing and the cost of energy that's used. That's fine. To me, it's more about the advanced feature sets you get with other architecture, fast payments, smart contracts, you know, just all sorts of craziness you could do on, you know, next gen blockchains. To me, Bitcoin is the fairest system. It's the one that is hardest for any centralized party to gain control over and change. Therefore, I think it has its place within the crypto landscape, but proof of work is not the only way and probably not the main way to do blockchain, even though I think it will stay with Bitcoin for the long run. There's nothing else like it. It is in a league of its own, but it's not appropriate for every use case. Cointelegraph has the following article, why Solana will prevail despite Ethereum ETF. Ethereum may have a spot ETF in a few months, 
but Solana has superior speed and UX design, its market dominance is inevitable. Uh, you know, I don't know if they're trying to say that Solana is going to overtake Ethereum. It will not. I have no doubt, as I said when Solana was very low value, that it is going to be a good investment. I think eventually it probably will be a layer uh, two solution for Ethereum. It'll link up there, but it is not one of the greatest, nor the greatest smart contract blockchain in the world. In relation to other blockchains, other contenders, Ethereum competitors, I think it's wildly overvalued, even though I have no doubt it'll do well. There's not a chance in hell that Solana, though, overtakes Ethereum ever, no less anytime soon. Cointelegraph reporting Avalanche back up after failing to produce blocks for four hours. Avalanche suffered a major outage on Friday, failing to produce blocks for more than four hours. Developers released a software patch disabling logic that permitted an excessive amount of gossip to take place between validators. Avalanche's interruption followed a five-hour outage earlier this month from rival blockchain Solana. Look, it's easy to sit back and laugh. I expect that Avalanche will do well during this next growth cycle of cryptocurrencies. Take note of this kind of thing. Is it continuous? Does it happen You know, a significant amount of times? You have to ding the blockchain a little bit but it's not like a death sentence. Block, uh, Avalanche is back up and running and you know life continues. Avalanche, like Solana, a top chain, just not in my upper tier of blockchains, at least in my rankings. Judge signs off on Binance 4.3 billion deal with US prosecutors. Binance pleaded guilty to violating sanctions and anti-money laundering laws last year. And so this kind of concludes the business side of things, right? Like Binance is gonna pay the fines, they're going to uh, allow regulators to monitor their activities for some amount of time, few years. And now all we have left is really the human side. How much punishment or time does CZ get? Maybe he just gets house arrest. Maybe he actually has to do jail time. Hopefully not. I've been a vocal critic of CZ at times saying, look, they ain't doing everything right. They're not following the letter of the law in really any jurisdictions. But at the end of the day, crypto users suffered no losses. You know, Binance has always honored, you know, all of their liabilities here. And I think this was a very troubling time that could have ended up, you know, in a bad way for crypto at large. And they saw this through in a very professional manner. They settled things out. And that is better for everyone. I don't think CZ uh, should be going to jail for a long period of time. We will see, though. Craig Wright admits to editing Bitcoin white paper presented in Copa Trial, Copa Trial to find out whether Craig Wright is the creator of Bitcoin, if he really is Satoshi Nakamoto. And uh, I don't want to give my opinion on this because he, he sues everyone. It's wild, this guy. The Crypto, Crypto Open Patent Alliance, COPA, wants to prove that Craig Wright's claim to be the founder of Bitcoin is a lie backed by forgeries. This is such a, a silly ongoing thing. We've had so many of these trials. Hopefully this puts an end to it. And I'll tell you this, Bitcoin's greatest strength is the fact that who Satoshi is, doesn't matter and we actually don't want to know who he is and just stay away thank you for doing what you did for creating this blockchain industry now just stay in the shadows bitcoin's greatest strength is the fact that who satoshi is is unknown and there is no centralized individual that can come out and say i created bitcoin and this is the way things should be and so th this whole argument is just dumb i can't wait to put it behind us we'll see how the courts roll again i'm not giving my opinion I don't want Craig Wright knocking on my door with some kind of subpoena. We will see how it plays out. Montenegro court approves Do Kwan's extradition to the United States. This is kind of like the last scumbag of the last bull run. You know, all these wackadoos that crashed the market. And I'll tell you this, out of everyone, uh, you know, whether we're talking about, you know, SBF, Three Arrows Capital, Alex Mashensky, like, I don't really hate Do Kwan. Like he had this Ponzi nomic coin that blew up, but everyone was told fairly what it did and how it operated and kind of if you got stuck in it, it's your own fault, right? Like maybe there's some liability there. Actually, there absolutely is if you cause that much damage in life, I guess. But, uh, you know, I don't think he's as bad as the other ones. My question is, you know, all that money that was supposed to be defending the peg, how much of that, if any, did he take for himself? Other than that, I would say, you know, the guy messed up. People messed up by going along with this racket. 
there probably should be some penalty, but not as much as your Sam Bakeman Freeds and the rest of them. He was transparent. He told us how his algorithmic stable coin worked, which is quite alluring. Like, I really wish we could make this work. I'm, I'm doubtful it can. But, you know, you want a decentralized stable coin because we see what happens where Circle goes, you know what? No, you can't have your stable coin on Tron. And they can freeze accounts and they do all sorts of stuff. If we could have a, something like what Doquan wanted to make, that'd be great. The question is, can it be done? I guess more will try over time. We will see. Lastly, spot ETF cumulatively is trading volumes exceeding $50 billion. Huge success. There's a big appetite uh, for this investment product that will only grow from here. We are in the next generation of crypto investing, and that's exciting. I'm glad to see uh, you know, that spot Bitcoin ETFs have been a success. You know, there'll be tough times. There'll be times when there's a lot of sell pressure coming out of there. People will say, oh, that was just a fad. It's over. It's only up from here over the very long horizon. And it's good to see the success so far. Just remember, there'll be tough days. We understand this. Let me know what you think down below. And as always, please like, please subscribe. The revolution will be televised right here on Jungle Link.